In the previous video, we derived our first kinematics equation. This equation describes an object moving along a straight line with constant velocity. Right? The idea is that at time t0, the position of the object is x0. At time t1, the position of the object is x1. So in between time 0 and time 1, the object moves with constant velocity, which means moving in a straight line without getting faster or slower. And it turns out that if those things are true, then we have this equation, which relates the position and time at the end of the motion to the position and time at the beginning of the motion. Namely, we have x1 equals x0 plus the velocity times t1 minus t0. So we're going to use this equation to solve an example problem here. And we're also going to be using this handout here, which will guide us through our kinematics problems. This handout is available at the top of the module in the module introduction. Uh, anyways, uh, let's look at the problem and then we will let the handout guide us through the solution. So we have a car moving along and over here we have a person with a really long arm and a big stopwatch who is keeping track of everything that happens as the car drives along the road here. So the car is going to pass a tree, a flag, and a house. And we are given the time on the stopwatch when the car passes the tree and the time on the stopwatch when the car passes the house. We know that the distance from the tree to the house is 500 meters. And the distance from the flag to the house is 200 meters. So we would like to find the car's velocity, assuming it to be constant. And we would like to find the time when the car passes the flag. Okay, so let's get started. First step is to draw a clear sketch illustrating the problem. So we have the beginnings of a sketch here, even though we are going to add more information to the sketch as we proceed through the problem. Next, coordinate system. So let's just say we call this line here our x-axis, and we should put in an origin. So normally in these problems, we place the origin at the leftmost location of interest. Now here, the leftmost location of interest is the tree. So I'm gonna put x equals zero right here. Now you might say that the car starts back here, but nothing really of any uh, great import happens back here. The problem really starts when the car passes the tree. So let's put the origin here. Okay, so step three is identify and number the moments of interest. So the moments of interest are those moments in the process where something significant happens that is going to somehow play a role in our analysis. So there are three moments of interest here. The first moment of interest will be where the car passes the tree. So we're gonna call that moment of interest zero. So that's a zero with a circle around it. The next moment of interest will be where the car passes the flag. So we will call that moment of interest one. And the next moment of interest after that will be where the car passes the house. We will call that moment of interest two. There are no moments of interest after that. Okay, step four, at each moment of interest, write down the appropriate kinematic variables. So we have option A, constant velocity problem. Option B, constant acceleration problem. Now, I have not introduced you to the idea of acceleration yet. So this must be a constant velocity problem. And in fact, it is because the car is moving at constant velocity. Okay, so what do we do for a constant velocity problem? For a constant velocity problem next to each moment of interest, write down symbols to denote time and position, write the velocity off to the side. Uh, at the first moment of interest, the car passes the tree, we are calling that moment zero. So at that moment, we would have time zero and position zero. When the car passes the flag, that's moment one. So we will call that time one and position one, and when the car passes the house, time two and position two. Okay, so that was step four. Now for step five, 
for those kinematic variables whose values are known, right, the values of the kinematic variables on the diagram next to the variables. Okay, so basically we're supposed to fill in the given information. So we decided that the tree is located at the origin. So this event where the car passes the tree has a coordinate of x equals zero. And look at these distances that I gave up here. It is 500 meters from the tree to the house. Since the tree is at the origin, the house must be at x2 equals 500 meters. And since the flag is 200 meters behind the house, the flag must be at x1 equals 300 meters. And we are also given the times where the car passes the tree and the house. So let's put those in. The car passes the tree when the stopwatch reads 15 seconds. And the car passes the house when the stopwatch reads 47 seconds. Now we would like to find the car's velocity. Uh, we can go to six on the handout here. It says write down the equations that you will use to solve for the unknown variables. So we can figure out what equations we might use to solve for the car's velocity. And we only have one equation to work with, which is this one. However, there is a wrinkle here. The way I wrote this equation, it connects moment zero to moment one. However, this equation is valid anytime we have a constant velocity process, which is to say this equation is valid anytime we have an object moving with a constant velocity all the way from the beginning of the process to the end. Now, in this problem, the car moves with a constant velocity throughout the process. So from moment zero to moment one, the car moves with a constant velocity. From moment zero to moment two, the car moves with a constant velocity. And from moment one to moment two, the car moves with a constant velocity. So I can take this equation and rewrite it so that it connects moment zero to two. And I can also take this equation and rewrite it so that it connects moment one to moment two. In other words, I could also write x2 equals x0 plus v times t2 minus t0. And I could also write x2 equals x1 plus v times t2 minus t1. All three of these equations are true because the car moves with a constant velocity throughout. All right, so which one of these should we use to find the car's velocity? Or perhaps maybe contemplate that on your own, uh, figure out which equation we need to use, then take that equation, solve for the velocity, remember to solve symbolically, put the numbers in at the end, and get the velocity on your own before rejoining the video. Okay, so continuing with the problem, which of these equations should we use? Well, if you look at the information we have here, we have complete information about moment zero, complete information about moment two, but we don't have complete information about moment one. So let's just solve for the velocity by connecting moment zero to moment two. So we write then that uh, for part A, x2 equals x0 plus v times t2 minus t0. Now x0 is 0, so that can go away. And then we can solve for the velocity. So notice that we are solving symbolically. We are not putting any numerical values in until we have isolated the quantity we're looking for. Okay, so now we have isolated the velocity, so let's substitute. I have x2 equals 500 meters. And then time 2 minus time 0, 47 seconds minus 15 seconds. Okay, so put this into your calculators. And when I did that, I got 
V equals 15.6 meters per second. Now, what I like to do when I find one of the kinematic quantities in an intermediate step is to go into the figure and just put that into the figure so that I can use it in later parts of the problem. Now let's go to step B. We want to find the time at which the car passes the flag. So why don't you try that on your own? Figure out which of these three equations you're going to use. And then starting with that equation, solve symbolically for time one, which is to say, go through the algebra without plugging in any numbers. Then once you have isolated time one, put in the numbers along with the correct units. And then when you get to the end, calculate the unit and make sure the unit comes out to be an appropriate unit for time. And once you've given that a shot, you can rejoin the video and I can show you how I would do it. Okay, going to step B, we want to solve the three. Now notice that this top equation has a time one in it. The bottom equation has a time one in it. Uh, my preference would be to use this because then we can simplify a bit because x zero is zero. So I'm going to start by equals x zero plus v t one minus t zero. Okay x zero is zero. Now we are going to solve symbolically for time one. So the first step would be to divide through by V. So we get over on the left, x one over V. On the right, we have T one minus T zero. Now I'm going to take that T zero, move it to the left where it picks up a plus sign and then switch sides. That gives time one equals time zero plus x one over V. Okay, so we have solved symbolically, right? No numerical substitution yet. Now we can put in the numbers. So time zero is 15 seconds. And plus x1, 300 meters, divided by v, 15.6 meters per second. All right, now if you put this into your calculator, I expect you will get 34.2 but let's make sure the unit comes out to be the appropriate unit for time, which would be seconds. Now that first term has seconds as the unit, good. And now in that second term, we have meters divided by meters over seconds. So cancel the meters and then one over seconds in the denominator becomes seconds in the numerator. So both of these terms have units for seconds and there is our answer.